Automatic Addison. In this tutorial, we will explore how to implement inverse kinematics with clearance cost optimization using the MoveIt Task Constructor. We'll create an application from scratch that demonstrates how to plan movements for a robotic arm while considering obstacle avoidance. The output of your application will provide detailed insights into the planning process, including the number of solutions found and the performance of each stage. Here is what your final output will look like. On a high level, your program will demonstrate a sophisticated approach to motion planning that does the following. First, we set up a scene with MyCobot 280 robot and a spherical obstacle. Then we define a target pose for the robot's gripper, the end effector. Then we use the compute IK stage to find valid arm configurations reaching the target. We then apply a clearance cost term to favor solutions that keep the robot farther from obstacles. And then finally, we use ROS2 parameters to control the behavior of the clearance cost calculation. While OMPL and PILs are motion planners that generate full trajectories, they rely on IK solutions, inverse kinematic solutions, like those computed in this code, to determine the feasible goal configurations for the robot. In a complete motion planning pipeline, this IK solver would typically be used to generate goal states, which OMPL or PILs would then use to plan full, collision-free paths from the robot's current position to the desired gripper pose. The code you will develop in this tutorial can serve as a foundation for various practical applications. First, you have robotic assembly in cluttered environments. Imagine being able to generate arm configurations that avoid collisions with nearby parts or fixtures, and being able to optimize for paths that maintain maximum clearance for obstacles. Also, bin picking and sorting. You can plan motions that safely navigate around the edges of bins and other items, minimizing the risk of collisions in tight spaces. Then you've got collaborative robot operations. You can ensure the robot maintains a safe distance from human work areas and dynamically adjust paths based on changing obstacle positions. And then quality inspection tasks. You can generate smooth, collision-free paths for sensors or cameras to inspect parts. You can also optimize for viewpoints that balance clearance and inspections. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a solid understanding of how to implement inverse kinematic solutions with clearance cost optimizations in your motion planning tasks. This approach will make your robotic applications more robust, efficient, and capable of operating safely in complex environments. Let's dive into the code and explore how to build this advanced motion planning application. First thing you need to do is to make sure you have the code. So I'm going to open up the folder here, ROS2 source. MyCobot ROS2, MyCobot MTC demos, and source. And make sure you have the IK clearance cost, IK clearance cost, and IK clearance cost parameters in the source folder. You can find all of this on my GitHub. Make sure the code is in there. Also, make sure the parameters file is in there to this YAML file. Let's have a look at that. Looks like this. The cumulative parameter determines how the robot measures its proximity to obstacles. When this is set to false, the robot only considers its single closest point to any obstacle. But when it's set to true, it considers the distance of multiple points on the robot to obstacles, and it adds these distances together. So this cumulative approach provides a more thorough assessment of the robot's overall proximity to obstacles, potentially leading to more cautious movements. Now you have the with world parameter here. This determines what the robot considers as obstacles when planning its movements. And when that's set to true, the robot takes into account all known objects in its environment. This could include tables, chairs, walls, or think of any obstacles that have been mapped or sensed. It's like, it's like the robot is aware of its entire surroundings. When it's set to false, the robot might only consider avoiding collisions with itself. Those are self collisions or a specific subset of objects. It ignores the broader environment. So save the file and close. Now go to the terminal, build the code, Colcon build. My D key is stuck. Come on, baby. Okay, Colcon build and source, source, tilde forward slash dot bash RC. Let's 
It's time to get a new keyboard, folks. Okay, that's it. Now you built. Okay, now it's time to launch everything. And to do that, we do MTC underscore demos. IK underscore clearance underscore cost, like that. And we set up the this alias in previous tutorial, just to remind you what that does. Alias, MTC demos, we're running this bash script right here, which you can find on my GitHub. And we're adding the argument IK clearance cost, so it knows which demo to run. Now press enter and run it. Let it come up fully. Okay, now let's understand the motion planning results. So we've got the motion planning task panel in Arviz, which displays the structure and outcomes of our IK clearance cost task. The panel shows a hierarchical view with motion planning tasks at the root, followed by clearance IK. Stretch this out just a little bit so you can see everything. back and forth between both solutions. So under clearance IK, we can see two stages are visible. We've got IK, this represents the compute IK stage where inverse kinematic solutions are generated. We've got the initial state right here. This corresponds to the fixed state stage that sets the initial robot configuration. The second column here shows green check marks and numbers indicating the quantity of successful solutions for each task component. And the image reveals that two solutions were found right here. You can see that two solutions were found for the overall clearance IK task, both originating from the IK stage. The time column displays the computational time for each component. And for the IK stage, we see a value of 1.0054 seconds, indicating the duration of the inverse kinematics calculations. The cost column is particularly noteworthy for this context. For the successful IK solutions, we observe a cost value of 66.5382. This cost is directly associated to the clearance cost term that we incorporated into our compute IK stage. We've got a comment over here, which you can see the comment provides additional context for the solutions. It displays the clearance distances between the obstacle and a specific robot part. Let's see if we can take a closer look at that. I'm gonna expand that out so you can see everything in all its glory. You can see that between clip gripper left one, which is part of the gripper, part of the gripper piece. So this information quantifies how the robot positions itself relative to the obstacle in the computed solutions. Let's have a look at the terminal window planning results. I'm going to scroll up a little bit until we load our robot model. So we can see that the MyCobot 280 robot model was loaded successfully. A planning scene was generated. The robot was positioned in the ready position ready configuration. We've got our obstacle here, a sphere, was introduced into the scene at coordinates minus 0.18, minus 0.14, 0.15 with the radius of 10 centimeters. We've got the fixed state and the compute IK stage right here. They were established and incorporated into the task. And we can see that task planning concluded successfully yielding two solutions. And then here, analyzing the terminal output of our IK clearance cost demo, we see the following task structure. So we've got clearance IK right here as top level, 
we can see two solutions were propagated backwards, two solutions were pop propagated forwards, and ultimately two solutions were ultimately generated. Got our IK stage right here. Two solutions were generated at this stage. Two were propagated backwards and two propagated forwards. And we've got our initial state. One solution was generated at this stage, one propagated backwards and one propagated forwards. So this all this output demonstrates the bidirectional nature of the planning process in the move it task constructor. The initial state provides a starting point, okay, which is then used by the IK stage to generate solutions. And these solutions are propagated both forwards and backwards through the planning pipeline. So the fact that we see two solutions at the IK stage indicates that our compute IK stage, incorporating the clearance cost term, successfully found two distinctive inverse kinematic solutions that satisfied our constraints. These solutions maintain sufficient clearance from the obstacle while reaching the target pose. So by examining these results in the terminal in conjunction with what you see in RViz, you gain a very good understanding, comprehensive understanding of how the robot's configuration changes to maintain clearance from the obstacle while achieving the desired pose of the gripper. Let's have a detailed look at the code. I'm going to open it up here. ROS2, source, my cobot ROS2. Demos, source, iClay clearance cost.cpp. Okay, so here in this file, we begin with the comprehensive comment block, as we always do, outlining the file's purpose, demonstrating motion planning with collision avoidance using the move it task constructor. This describes the program's functionality, which creates a scene with an obstacle and computes inverse kinematic solutions while considering clearance from obstacles. We've got the necessary headers for ROS2 and MoveIt in the task constructor library. This establishes the foundation for our IK clearance cost demo. Below, we've got the main function where all the magic happens. Here is where we initialize ROS2 and create a node name IK clearance cost demo. We set up a logger here for informational output. This setup ensures proper communication within the ROS2 ecosystem. The code sets up right here a parameter listener to load and manage parameters for the IK clearance cost demo. We log whether the clearance cost should be cumulative and whether it should consider the world. Line 47, we create a task object named Clearance IK. The robot model is MyCobot280. Loaded and verified. This step is important for accurate motion planning based on the specific robot's characteristics. We then set up the planning scene here, setting the robot to its default state and then setting the robotic arm to the ready position here. Got obstacle creation right here. The obstacle is a sphere. You can see on line 78, we add that to the planning scene. This obstacle will be considered during the inverse kinematics calculations to ensure clearance. Here's we have our fixed on line 92, our fixed stage. Okay, fixed state stage is created to set the initial state of the robot. We use the previously configured scene and ignore collisions at this stage. Line 98, we compute right here. We've got our compute IK stage setup. This is created for inverse kinematics calculations. So we configure it with the initial state, the target group, which is the arm right here, line 101, the target pose, line 104, the timeout, line 106, and the maximum number of inverse kinematic solutions to compute on line 107, which we have hard-coded. 
We've got the clearance cost term down here. We create that, add it to the compute IK stage. This cost term will influence the inverse kinematic solutions to maintain clearance from obstacles. So down here, we've got our task planning and execution. Down here, line 120. We also have good error handling for potential exceptions during planning to ensure robustness in various scenarios. We've got our results logging, line 146. Logging the results of the planning process, including the number of solutions found, the task state, or failure explanations if the planning was unsuccessful. And then down below, we spin it. Spin the node. A separate thread is created for spinning the ROS2 node. This allows the program to handle callbacks and events while performing its main tasks. Feel free to take all this code, throw it into your favorite LLM to get more detailed explanation, but I've got really good comments in here to walk you through the whole thing, so you'll be able to mix and match and adapt this for your own robotics work. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed it, that's it for this tutorial, and keep building.